everyone we have the developer insights of the final shape weapon tuning preview hey guardians it's weapon teams here with the weapon balance update for the final shape let's go through some comprehensive pve pve weapon damage pass exotic changes varying from substantial reworks to minor tweaks and the world's first rape upcoming blah 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 weapon archetypes so right here guys Back to update 6.3, we rolled out the spec mods, Dragonfly, Surrounded, and Rampage into the basic functionality of those perks. And now we're coming back to the rest, the spec mods. We've increased the base weapon damage almost universal, universally, making exceptions for weapons that were already overperforming or we buffed very recently. We have, re we have retired the falling weaponing, weapon mods. Boss spec, taken spec, minor spec, major spec, adept big one spec. We are already happy with the damage output of the exotic primary weapons and the trace rifles. So we slightly reduced their damage bonus versus red bars. In most cases, that means their damage output is roughly unchanged since they receive buffs below. Reduce damage bonus versus miners from 40% to 30% except fighting line. Included below, there are matching damage changes by the archetype. Not that we made some exceptions for the exotic weapons that we already over. We're already performing strongly applied some buffs. Suspific tiers of the enemies except were noted. These changes are in PvE only. Also note that the because the exotic weapons can't equip mods, this gives them large a larger relative buff from than legendaries. Wrist runner's maximum possible damage is increased 10% versus red bars, but Shura's wrath is increased by 3% in effect because it can no longer slot a minor spec mod. In addition, the compensating removal of spec mods, we've taken the opportunity to buff some weapons types that have languished in-game PvE, most notably pulse rifles. Increased base PvE damage versus all combatants pulse rifles. Exceptions of Graviton Lance and Revision Zero's Heavy Burst mm -hmm. Mode. These both have intrinsic PvE damage buff built in, I see. Pellet shotguns, 10% exceptions of Legends of Arceus, Tractor Cannon, Conditional Finality, the 4th Horseman. These are all already performing as intended. So 4th Horseman's good, huh? Slug Shotties, 9%. Fusion Rifles, 7%. Exceptions of Thousand Word Voices. This one just buffed. Was just buffed. Sniper Rifles. Exceptions of Izanagi, Burden's Honed Edge Shots, and Cloud Strike Storm. These are both performing well. Glaive projectiles, 7%. Linear fusion rifles, 5%. Increased damage to versus the minor red bars. This stacks with the PvE damage increase. Sidearms, trace rifles, scout rifles, and bows, 20%. Auto rifles and pulses are 15%. For pulse rifles, this is an addition to above the buff. And Graviton Lance, Revision Zero's heavy burst mode are included. I see. Pulse rifles do 1.2... 1.15 equals 38 percent more damage to red bar submachine guns at 10 percent hcs five percent increased damage versus majors orange bars trace rifles 20 percent increased damage globally including pvp machine guns and swords seven percent i see splash damage Sorry about that, guys. Splash damage from primary overperforming final shape combined with the damage buffs listed below. Slightly overpower weapons. Um, several releases back with the kinetic PVE account for being harder to use. Subclass, blah, blah, blah. You guys can read through all that. Um, update heavy adaptive aggressive burst frame intrinsic names match burst all weapon two burst heavy includes sidearms hand cans three bursts include sidearms linear fusion rifles adaptive pulse rifles four burst aggressive burst pulse rifles remove foundry name of vice rapid fire hake precision and amalon weapon intrinsics update the hip fire reticle and better show accuracy and aim state Hand cannons. Some aggressive hand cannons struggle to compete with the stats of top tier examples. Igneous Hammer, Criminal's Dagger, and something new returning in the final shape. We updated the stats. Criminal's Dagger is going to get a stability from 3, 23 to 31, handling from 23 to 31, magazine size from 8 to 9, 
airborne effectiveness from 10 to 21. Something new from the Season of Soltis is getting buffed as well, guys. This will be a hand cannon to use. I have that one. 27 to 30 stability, 24 to 30 handling, magazine size 8 to 9. Low inventory sniper rifles were a little too low in PvE for our liking. We've increased the minimum, increased minimum reserves from 14 shots. Maximum reserves is unchanged. Adaptive linear fusion rifles are strong, but in some cases, blah, blah, blah. We now have wave frame lock rocket launchers, competitive damage, and Destiny 2 into light update, but some stats these gameplay didn't affect, and that pass were adjusting the blast radius. The size of the wave is now infected by the blast radius stat, blah, blah, blah. Default display stat when blast radius changed from 100 to 50 to represent the previous baseline. Special ammo wave frame grenade launchers overperform over as add clear weapons in their current state, so we're frame grenade launchers we pulled the length of the wave back a little reduced the length of waves from 22 meters to 15 except the dead messenger swords updated the sword reticle to better indicate the charged sword state the, the sword energy is consumed the mount delay the sword before it recharges and subtly appears to the reticle bug fixes blah 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 fix all that stuff guys you guys can check that out Exotics, Divinity's ability to bypass combatant com gameplay by generating a weak spot called a cage internally on command has too high an uptime as it stands, particularly with trigger feathering. We're not changing how effective the cage is, how feathering works, but we're increasing how long it takes to generate the cage, which will make it less ammo efficient and less useful against targets to break aim frequently. Increase the number of shots required to generate the cage by 75% against combatants and PvP is unchanged. Rat King's firing animation makes the weapon hard to control at higher high rate of fire, so we updated it. <laughs> Swap the firing animation to the same one as we use on other sidearms. Devil's Ruin could be made to apply the as its firing animation and other sidearms. Blah blah blah. Fix an issue with the firing animation with the Devil's Ruin to other equipped sidearms with the weapon swap during the firing animation. Symmetry needed a little attention, particularly in reload speed and handling, so we took this opportunity to increase those via the Catalyst. Thank you. Catalyst now provides 10 plus reload speed, 10 plus handling, and the Eddie Current perk is in addition to its existing effects. Gallifhorn's worth wolf pack rounds always looked like an arc projectiles regardless of the weapon's actual damage type. We updated the visuals of wolf pack rounds to match the damage type. For example, the Gallifhorn, they will now use solar effects on the Royal Entry Void Rocket Launcher buffed by Gallifhorn. They will now use Void effects. Launch of Touch of Malice from the Darkness Ball doesn't last long enough to be useful in PvE. Increase the duration of the burn applied by the darkness ball against cabans 2 to 3.5 seconds ostia striga made it too easy to spread poison across a whole encounter from a couple of kills of weak combatants now the four second cooldown on the poison burst on kills poison burst from sustained damage doesn't receive this cooldown Necrochasm add clear rolls wasn't as strong as we'd like, so we've buffed the, and replaced the outlaw perk on the catalyst with a new custom perk that leans into the roll. Intrinsic perk now provides reload speed after precision kills, increased duration applied by cursed thrall explosion against combatants from 2 to 3.5 seconds. Catalyst has been rebuilt, one of four thrall, damaging three combatants in quick succession provides a period of increased damage range and aim assist. The limits damage is roughly equivalent to the swords. The healing on hard removes the intended downside of using the sword for a boss DPS, and we changed the heavy attack was too strong. Reduce healing effect by 20. While 20%, while the weapon is inherent to 7% global buffed swords, we reduce the damage of a high-end chained attack by 20% from that point. This means combos lower stacks are less affected by the change and the combos at higher stacks. Dead Man's Tower Rapid File Fantasy isn't landing as well as we'd like, so we bumped the rate of fire, added a bit of stability of cranial spike and make it easier to control. At the same time, we strength the skewed a little high on the mouse and keyboard and a little low on the controller, so we've accuracy, so we tuned the accuracy and magnetism controller reticle friction to address this. So you guys can see all that stuff that they address with that. Um, the colonies, positive if you need to, right there. All right, guys, the colonies fantasy of spawning, replicating intrinsic robot 
insectoid robots is something we've always wanted to use for a while. This update allows Colony to deal with waves of commands in a unique way. Now spawns additional insectoid robots and final bows. More robots up to five spawn from tougher combatants. Truth of the falling behind the exotic rocket launchers, largely due to the lackluster damage and wanted to lean further to the rockets, blah, blah, blah. Queen Breaker's damage output. You guys are into that? I'm not. You guys can pause it if you need to. I don't know if it got buffed. Yeah, it's getting buffed, guys. It's not good. <laughs> it's getting damage increased. We work Saints Fist perks. Damage melee increase your charge rate. Damage reload speed for a short duration. Landing a majority of pellets in a burst increases melee damage. Ariana's Val has fallen behind anti barrier weapons and a sword weapon has opportunity for a subclass to tie in. Breaking a match and shield or piercing damage barrier will cause the target to ignite. Deterministic Chaos didn't have a clear niche that we shipped it. Now we redesigned it for anti-champion and weakening powerhouse. This weapon is now intrinsically anti-barrier. Um, the heavy metal vex, vex decimal perks have their location behavior swap. Heavy metal now causes the fourth bullet to make them targets volatile. Vex decimal now causes 16 bullets to also weaken them. The flexibility has now offered the fundamentals on the Borealis, Hardlight, and Dead Messenger exotic weapons is useful, but most of the time there's no need to switch the damage types repeatedly, so it's irritating to have the current damage type clear on death. The fundamental now maintains its state across death or respawn. Yeah, so it was kind of irritating changing it. Perks of Clarity working on solo activities attended, blah, blah, blah. Perks 100% uptown on PvP will no longer work in Rumble. Archer's Gambit has been brought down. Grave Robber needs some extra love. Now activate on dealing damage with a powered melee in addition to standard melee kills. Chain Reaction is too strong in special ammo weapon spot. In the current form, we have branched it with the heavy special weapon, blah, blah, blah. Special 15% smaller AoE. Eddie Current was a little too slow to activate. You know it's getting buff. Underdog was shelved a long time ago, but we wanted to swap it out for a more viable perk. Insistence of Underdog, we replaced it with Pulse Monitor. Monitor. Osmosis and Permamality. Blah, blah, blah. You guys can check all this out, guys. It's a lot of stuff for me to go through. High grounds functionality. Pause it if you need to. Bunch of different changes. The future, guys. Let's Let's read this. Now that we largely are happy with the Destiny Damage PvP, we're going to move to the PvP specific tuning out the game modes into the weapon tuning to the future. We will give us the ability to fine tune weapons and fundamentally precision hand cans instead of all hand cans. We also have some big system changes we're working on in the future release, including redesigns of the PvP and PvE MO economies, introducing more player choice into weapon mods and new weapon types. That's all for today. We hope all the changes will help you understand your arsenal will fare once this final shape arrives on June 4th and that you will be able to prepare for the loadouts for the new raid. Be on the lookout for another sandbox focus article coming on May 22nd about abilities and exotic armor. All right, guys, that was our little um, dev insights on the final shape weapon tuning preview. Make sure you guys leave a like, comment, subscribe. Peace.